The Me Too movement has inspired discussions in nearly every industry, and the music industry is no exception. At this year's Winter Jazz Fest in New York City, female musicians were speaking out against sexism and the need for more support in the jazz community. News Hour Weekend spoke with two musicians who performed at the festival, Grammy Award-winning drummer and composer Terry Lynn Carrington and up-and-coming vibraphonist Sasha Berliner. Yvette Feliciano reports. Composer and drummer Terry Lynn Carrington is a three-time Grammy Award winner. Perhaps the most prominent female drummer in jazz, Carrington was a child prodigy. I started playing the drums at seven, but at 10 I got my union card and started working. Uh, my dad was a saxophone player and a drummer, um, and my grandfather was a drummer. So I had music running through my blood. After four decades in the music business, Carrington gives credit not only to her family, but also her mentors, who are living legends, drummer Jack DeJohnette, saxophonist Wayne Shorter, and pianist Herbie Hancock. You know, as my career moved forward, there weren't so many female peers you know, on the instrument as well. So I just felt like uh, I was, you know, in a bit of a boys club, but I felt like somebody they let into the club, you know, somebody that was an exception. And then I started, you know, realizing, wow, this needs to change. You know, there should be more women that feel ownership in the music. When Carrington won a Grammy for Best Jazz Instrumental Album in 2014, she was the first and is still the only woman to win in that category. Her win defied the traditional stereotype of women in jazz. They're often seen as vocalists, but not instrumentalists. But women were a bright spot at this year's annual Winter Jazz Fest in New York City. One of the biggest jazz festivals in the world, more than a third of the acts had women as band leaders, the highest number in the festival's 14-year history. Just this week, the festival made a commitment to furthering gender equality in jazz. It became one of 45 international music festivals that signed on to a European music industry initiative, pledging to implement a 50-50 gender balance in its lineup and conference panels by 2022. It's called Key Change. At Winter Jazz Fest, Terry Lynn Carrington was joined by another Grammy Award-winning artist and longtime collaborator, the bassist and vocalist Esperanza Spaulding. Good afternoon and welcome. They also took part in a panel on jazz and gender. There, the conversation was not just about the need for better female representation, but the sexist culture that female instrumentalists regularly face. Esperanza, I just wanted to ask you too how you feel sexism has impacted your career, as, as specifically as a bassist. You know, maybe it doesn't bother everybody who walks into that room and has to say over and over again, like, no, I'm not somebody's girlfriend or a singer. Like, I'm here to play. You don't notice that you're bracing. You don't notice that you're, you're sending the verbal, behavioral message, I am not accessible to you in any way except for the music. You can't touch me. You can't kiss me. I don't like you. Don't get near me energetically because it's not that game. And believe it or not, that takes a lot of energy to maintain all the time. So, <laughs> for the first time, being in a group with all women, I personally know I accessed aspects of my musicianship that I never got to, because I was always in a battle. And you know you're not free if you're in defense mode, you're in survival mode. And the music needs more than survival energy. One of the youngest band leaders at the festival was 19-year-old percussionist Sasha Berliner, a sophomore at New York City's New School. In her newly assembled quintet, she plays the vibraphone. There's just nothing else that sounds like it, and um, I like that it can be melodic and also 
harmonic and also percussive. While in high school, Berliner started playing professional gigs in San Francisco and often found herself the only woman performing at a show. It was a bit uncomfortable at first because not only was I the only woman, but I was by far the youngest person there. She recently wrote an open letter to the jazz community in which she decried the staggeringly small number of women in jazz, and she wrote of the sexism endured by, quote, even those few women who have been deemed some of the utmost skilled musicians in the jazz community. The majority of people are not deliberately sexist, but they may not know that their actions are sort of, uh, uh, their tendencies in terms of hiring people, in terms of representation, are just a product of this culture that's never really supported women. She wrote of male players and teachers who she believed held low expectations of her because she was a woman and made sexist comments about female players. Berliner also described a history of sexual harassment by an older would-be mentor. It, you know, went a lot farther than just like being touchy or giving hugs and stuff. And um, I just got really angry at myself for that. And I think that ruined a lot of my confidence. I had trust issues with um, a lot of teachers going forward just because I, I didn't want that to happen again. Terry Lynn Carrington. <laughs> For Terry Lynn Carrington, one way to help end sexism in jazz is to involve more women, including recruiting more female teachers at music schools. As a professor at the Berklee College of Music for over a decade, she sees the positive effect of being a female role model for her male students. So that's why I love teaching, because I really feel like I can make a difference in somebody's life. And often, it's a young man's life. In the meantime, both Carrington and Berliner have signed an open letter started by a group of female jazz musicians inspired by the Me Too movement, declaring in part, we will not be silent. We have voice. We have zero tolerance for sexual harassment. The letter calls on institutions and the music community to take on a greater role in creating a safe and equitable environment for not just women, but people of all different backgrounds. The letter has more than 800 signatures.